here we are again, coming back to the resource challenge at the end of the repair week. If you'll remember, our three criteria of judging a re-option were does it contribute to a larger availability of resources, does it diminish waste generation, and does it reduce environmental pressure? At face value, repair is doing all of this, like reuse in the week before. By repairing a product, it can be kept in use for a longer time, thereby avoiding waste and also avoiding the need to produce a new product. This also implies fewer emissions to the environment. But unfortunately, there is no such thing as a free lunch. In order to be repaired, either the product or the repair crew needs to travel, for which cars will be used, and cars use fuel. If the product has to be sent back to the factory to be repaired, this may be a considerable trade-off. It would be best if products could be repaired by the consumer at home, or very close by in local repair shops, as in the iFixit case. But that's not possible for every product, as was shown to you this week as well. Another potential problem is related to the age of the product. This is especially and perhaps only relevant for products that use energy, such as refrigerators, lamps or computers. For products like tables, chairs or china, the older the better. Antiques are more sustainable. But by keeping energy using products in use for a longer time, we are at the same time preventing new and more energy efficient products from entering our homes. And we will use more energy than we would with new products. This is a trade-off that needs to be investigated case by case. We have to find the optimum lifespan. Much like the trip rate we discussed in the reuse week. But it seems this is a serious issue. An old fridge might still function very well, so it would seem a waste to throw it away. But the energy performance of new fridges improves so rapidly that after 10 years or so it becomes better from an energy point of view to replace it. Here, the third criterion clashes with the other two, and a choice must be made. Some other industry examples this week were the Fairphone and the coffee machine. Both are energy-using products. For both, the design strategy seems to be a modular design, so separate parts can be taken out and replaced separately. The coffee machine is part of a product service system for which a company takes responsibility. This is easy for the user, but the risk here would be faster trade-offs. Performance demands from such products are often higher than from privately owned products, as customers expect their machines to work perfectly every time, and this could lead to an earlier replacement. Obviously, repair improves the situation, and the involved transportation is not more than would have been needed for a new product. It's probably less, since not the whole product, but only the spare parts travel. The Fairphone example is a clear improvement from a consumer point of view over the usual situation in which one is told to buy a new phone because repairing the old one is not worth it. To really judge this on our three criteria, it would have to be compared with other end-of-life options, which are or may become available. Another consideration is that fashionable people want new telephones anyway, so the Fairphone seems to be for a specific niche in the market, for customers who care about the environment and so are inclined to hang on to their old telephones for a longer time. Pretty much like people eating eco-friendly food. Hopefully that niche is growing.